Hi all, let's have a look at the game Ian Nepom the Archie against Wang Hao in the 2020 World Championship Candidates Round 5. So it kicked off with e4, we have e5, knight f3, and now knight f6. The Petrov's defense, very, very solid choice. Ian takes on e5, we have d6, the knight retreats back, knight takes e4. And now a trendy line is knight c3, sometimes accepting double pawns like this with ideas of castling queenside. Here we see the more classic approach after knight takes e4, which is d4. Black plays d5, bishop d3, bishop f5. So a symmetrical pawn structure, thought to be quite drawish in general. White castles, bishop e7, rook e1. Black castles, knight bd2. We see knight d6, so offering the exchange of light square bishops. White doesn't take on f5. White waits for black to take. Sometimes taking you're giving something to the opponents you don't really want to. Here, it seems as though because the situation is pretty symmetrical, there doesn't seem any big deal in any case here with black taking on d3. We have c6. Bishop f4, knight a6. Now here things get pretty interesting. Can you guess what in the Pomniachi plays here? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. It does spice things up slightly. Okay. h4. Potentially this is a very dangerous h-pawn, resulting in sometimes a form pawn. If it's left there, it's a goal-hanging pawn. And as you know, I'm a fan of form pawns. This is actually what attracted me to this particular game to have a look at. Knight c7 is played. If the pawn is taken here, then knight takes h4, leaves d6 hanging. So knight c7 is played. We have knight g5, threatening chapmate. Black reacts with bishop takes g5. We have bishop takes f6 the bishop drops back queen d7 and now knight g3 is played so stopping black potentially from using f5 in the future rook a e8 and now actually this is pretty interesting as well here white takes on d6 to get a nice knight on f5 very dangerous queen d7 is played if Pawn grabbing is indulged in with queen b4. It does look at the rook, it does look at b2. White can actually play c3 here, and that's, that is pretty much a poison pawn, it seems. After rook eb1, for example, and in this situation, queen g3 threatens checkmate, and then rook takes b7 threatens all sorts of things, like rook takes and knight d6. As an example here, rook takes g7 is simple and strong. This is a very nice position for white. And even stronger, it seems, is knight d6. So with the, for example, rook e7, which are very nasty pin. So that really backfires. That poison pawn, yeah, is resulting in black actually losing material. So that's the most crushing way to play that. So yes, queen b4 seems out of the question, actually. We have queen d7. And then queen h3 with the threat of knight h6 check, which is one of my favourite tactical ideas quite often on fast time controls to win the queen like this. The king goes to h8. So just to put that on the board, if a, a5 knight h6 check and then queen takes d7. So the king goes to h8. And we have h5. So the, this looks like, yes, there's a fawny pawn coming along. Rook takes e1. Check, rook takes rook e8. Is black simplifying enough? Rook takes e8. We see knight takes e8. g4, a6, b3, queen e6. And then the knight comes back, blunting the queen on the e file. Nice central knight. Sometimes c4 might be dangerous. So there's still a little bit of pressure. Knight d6, trying to cope with c4. We see a form pawn installed now. h6 is played. It seems far too dan dangerous to allow fragmentation of the pawns with f6 as a target. 
we see g6 so the fawn pawn is left there fawn in the side near the king we see c4 a very interesting move indeed and you might think hold on black's tried to stop c4 why isn't this just losing a pawn there's something extremely cunning in this position it seems after d takes white just takes and sets a gigantic trap we see king g8 not falling into the trap if knight takes c4 white plays knight takes c4 queen takes c4 and there's a key move in this position which does the trick of really exploiting the form pawn without actually losing it can you see what that trick is if i give you five seconds to pause the video here what would you play with white it seems it's the key move here is queen h2 it keeps hold of the pawn it threatens the invasive invasive queen b8 check and if king g8 queen b8 check and then taking here and then taking here is actually an advantage to white we can actually transpose into an endgame scenario if g5 isn't played white will play g5 and we get this endgame scenario where white is winning here quite easily after king f5 so yeah pretty deep stuff this queen h2 idea in that variation let's look at that again queen h2 so the threat otherwise yeah i mean it's a big threat of queen b8 so very very interesting stuff so that's avoided with king g8 we see queen h2 anyway now king f7 c5 knight b5 queen b8 so not minding d4 drop well b7's attacked d queen d7 protecting b7 if knight takes d4 had been played queen takes b7 check and queen takes a6 this is actually potentially it's just an even position actually so yes it's, it seems as though black might have considered that continuation but uh, actually plays queen d7 it turns out queen e7 is interesting to be able to answer queen h8 with king e6 and it seems as though this is about even it's very very intricate stuff but that seems to be even that way of uh, handling things but in the game after queen h8 here with the queen now on e7 on d7 instead of e7 there's a huge difference between being on d7 and e7 so the queen on d7 after queen h8 this appears to be very very difficult now for black black's getting tied up in knots it seems we see king e6 and it seems well isn't that just the same protecting the h7 pawn but now we see f4 and there's a very dangerous idea of f5 check to try and potentially checkmate nearly checkmate the king we see knight takes d4 queen g8 check and it looks as though is white just after perpetual check so queen c8 check queen 7 queen g8 check queen f7 but here white varies can you see what white plays in this position which is a really you know quite a crushing move if i give you five seconds to pause the video here what does white play here yeah queen d8 it hits the knight and it threatens more importantly queen d6 will be checkmate so we have we see queen d7 if knight b5 instead that knight could just be nudged and once d6 is released queen d6 checkmate so queen d7 but now yeah the queen is only held by the king and it's a kind of overload situation can you see what white plays here which wins essentially five seconds here to pause the video okay f5 check yeah this is dragging potentially the king away from the queen so knight takes is needed here otherwise the queen drops if king takes if 
if not king takes if king e5 queen takes d7 so knight takes f5 but now the knight is hanging after queen takes d7 check knight takes f5 white as one material after king e6 knight e3 the game actually ended here so yeah a very interesting win it seems uh in upon the archie uh managed to get some favorable imbalances going later with that form pawn if we look at that form pawn installation uh, that was very very dangerous it seems and it's a very very cunning idea it seems as though even though c4 was oppressed uh suppressed uh white uh, after installing a form pawn uh, was looking at queen h2 as a remarkable resource on the chessboard so an amazingly subtle resourceful game from white to get this pressure it seems knight takes d4 here at this critical point or queen e7 as opposed to d7 makes all the difference but uh with queen d7 yeah there seems to be this overload which occurred which is difficult to avoid uh, so even though it looks as though it, for a moment it was perpetual check but here this is quite crushing this position exploiting the overloaded overworked pieces so yeah a very interesting game indeed from the world championship candidates i hope you got something from that and i hope to look at some other games from the candidates soon thanks very much hi there i hope you enjoyed this chess video and i hope you do check me out on udemy i have a number of chess courses on udemy and you can see this from king's crusher tv slash chess courses these links are actually with the relevant discount codes that i will be updating for you so at this point of this recording there was this bobby fisher annotated game course chess openings course chess tactics course which is actually a udemy bestseller a tactics training course a london system course my opening tango of knight c6 and there's also against d4 as well a tango involving an early knight f6 and then knight c6 and a pawn structure course so all of these links carry with them relevant discount codes when you click into them you'll see a discount code for example here you'll see that it's 78% uh, off so huge discount codes if you use Kings Crusher TV slash chess courses. So I hope you check that out. Thanks very much.